and welcome back yes now on the uh, workbench here we have well i suppose you could call this a, a robot and i suppose you could even call it self-balancing because it's not actually falling over is it i mean it's, okay we've cheated a bit we've got three wheels but all right let let me come clean this is not the robot we're going to be talking about today this was an early attempt I mean, it must be three years, four years ago when I put this together just for something to do. In fact, it was to do with this um, bridge controller here at the back for running these two motors that I built this. I thought, well, if I'm going to look at this um, this bridge control here, I might as well build a little robot car and just see how easy it is to, well, A, build and then B, control. Uh, the answer is easy and almost impossible in that order. Um, so this little thing that runs on an Arduino Nano at the top here with some ultrasonic sensors was, well, a little bit of a disappointment in as much that you would need an awful lot of code to make this do something sensible. So this is not what we're going to be talking about today. Now I want to give a quick shout out to JLC PCB. Now they've supplied many, many PCBs to me over the last two, three years. And uh, yeah, it's all very well for me to stand here and go, look, go and use JLC PCB. But let me give you an actual practical example of the sort of thing they can produce, shall we? And then I want to have a very quick word about shipping. Right, I've just had the PCB delivered for the other half of this project. It's this one here. I haven't even unpacked it probably yet, as you can tell. So as you can see, it's um, it's not a complex board, but it is a, a, a bitty board, isn't it? Lots of pieces on it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's done wonderfully well. Now, I've, I made this using Easy EDA, which, as you know, is part of that group, JLC PCB, LCSC.com for the components and Easy EDA. Now within Easy EDA, you can do a lot of things that you would never expect to do otherwise. For example, if you've noticed here, I've actually removed both the copper and the solder mask from that hole because that's gonna have a push button in there. And uh, I thought, no, I don't really want this sort of ground plane, which is what this is at the back here, going over this hole. I wasn't quite sure if it was gonna be connected. So I just drew it out and um, said, don't put any copper here and don't put any solder mask there either. So it's just back down to the bare PCB here, which is exactly the way I wanted it. Yeah, push it on, it says, oh, and it will be. So the shipping options to the United Kingdom, at least, as you can see, there's quite a few here. Now, the DHL, um, which is what I use, or have always used more or less, um, is obviously the quickest. You'll get it within three, four days. And in fact, DHL even tell you, oh, this will take a week, will be by the end of the day and a week's time. And then they send you another, oh, no, it's coming today, actually. So, yeah. Now, this, this bit here, DDP, that's duty and customs paid at the point of um, sending out. So you pay a bit more up front, but then you don't get charged any duty, import duty, VAT or anything else. OK, so that's something to bear in mind. And you've got to weigh up the risk there of that happening. But if you look right down the bottom of this list, look, there's a GB special airmail, Royal Mail. It's only $5.35. Now, I tried that out, I don't know, two, three months ago, and it was just absolutely fine. It says 10 to 15 business days, and it was about two weeks, actually, when I got it. So if you're looking for a cheaper option, try that out. And don't forget the special assembly offer they have. If we look here for the SMT assembly option, you'll see you can get a coupon that takes the $7 off for the setup fee and everything else. Why don't you try them out now? For what we are going to be talking about today, a true self-balancing robot that is... Mm, OK, it's, it's sort of almost there, but I think the time's come to actually show you what I've been doing for weeks on end now, it would appear. Uh, we have to go over to my soldering bench that way, and I have to change all my cameras and stuff because it's just it's just not going to fit on here. And even if it did, it would crash into everything. So let's go that way. Right, this is a self-balancing robot. As I can say, it's just about there. Um, whoa, and it's fallen over. Um, sometimes it does better than other times. All right, it's getting very excited now. Let it know it's on camera. So yes, it is, it is sort of self-balancing in, in the sense that it doesn't always fall over. And the remote control thing that we uh, looked at last week, I can actually turn it very slowly uh, that way, which is, uh, what way is that? Oh, hang on. Turn it on first. Helps. Right, let's turn it right. Oh, it doesn't want to turn right. Oh, it doesn't want to do anything. Oh, it's coming towards it. Stop! Too fast. Let me go backwards. Oh, let's run over the clips. You can see the trouble I'm having here. Um, right, it's sort of sitting there. Yeah, it's turning wrong way and well okay i think we'll just 
call a halt there for a minute and just see what it means to have a self-balancing robot and how does it work? What is it we're actually trying to do? What does it take for a piece of electronics to stand upright like that without falling over, which is of course gravity is going to pull it one way or the other, isn't it? So let's have a look at the, uh, the theory, I say theory, me showing you what I'm trying to do here. Right, so in the self-balancing robot then, imagine that this is the sort of thing it's trying to balance. You've got a heavy bit at the top of the broom there, and it will tend to fall. Now, we'll ignore the left and right falling because that's not really relevant to a self-balancing robot. It's the forward and backward motion we're interested in. Now, if the head of the broom falls forward, what I've got to do, if I'm going to balance this on my fingers, is to put the, the bottom of the broom underneath the head again. So as it falls, I move forward and catch it, if you like, and then as it moves backwards, move back as well and catch it. And uh, you get this sort of oscillation backwards and forwards. Now, with a self-balancing robot, you don't want those oscillations, of course. You want it to do it a lot quicker than that, so the instant it feels any kind of movement forward, it, it corrects it straight away, so that it stays there pretty much stationary. A bit like what I'm doing now. Yeah, I know, I surprised myself with my skill levels. Anyway, let's see how well the robot can do it, shall we? Okay, so you've seen basically what I'm trying to do with that broomstick. Um, now the question is, how do I get this to balance and do what it's supposed to do uh, according to the article which I'm trying to follow for this? Obviously, I've, I've built the hardware pretty much as um, Duke Brocking suggested. Um, a couple of differences and of course the, the this bit here I'll explain all this in a minute but we're not going to be able to go through in a single video something that's taken me weeks to put together and try out and of course I'm trying to get the code um, a bit more to my liking that's not to say dupes code is not any good it's just that well a it doesn't work for me particularly well as you're seeing right this is the original code um, and uh, well I just want to understand the code I want to be able to do it my way, as uh, the saying goes. Right, you've caught me in the middle of um, putting this little bit together. This is the frame. Um, it sort of adheres to Dupe's design. A little bit different. Um, I'm using not thick wood down the bottom here. It's this thin stuff because I think it just looks better. I've got a couple of um, reinforcing rods here. I might take them out later. I was worried that maybe the the glue and all that wasn't going to be strong enough, but actually this, this is pretty good. Um, of course, if it falls over thousands of times as I try and get the thing to balance, then well, maybe I'll have to put them back. Um, I've changed the top bit here as well. What Dupe had in, in his original design was, um, it says here, 11.1 volt LiPo, which is effectively a 12 volt, because it's just three 1860 type things put together. But his was a, a long, thin sort of battery pack that fitted across the top. Well, I wasn't going to go and buy a separate battery pack when I've got lots of these 18650s that fit in here. So this is a triple. That will give me my, well, nominally 12 volts, if you can see, you know, fully charged, 4.2. Put them in there, and this will then go on to the, uh, the circuit board. Um, yeah, so I've made a few changes to this, uh, not least um, the fact that um, he's using a D1 diode here to protect against reverse polarity. But of course, well, as I did a whole video on how we can protect against reverse polarity with just a simple MOSFET. Oh, oh, did you hear that? That was an alarm. Don't know what that meant. Um, that was a reverse polarity protection, and I, I'd got to do that with that single MOSFET. The other thing is, well, he's got a standard on-off switch here, right, a toggle switch. Um, also, I don't want to do that. I want to use my dual MOSFET auto off. So basically, um, we'll press a button. In fact, I've got the little button here, this thing here. So this will be on the circuit board. We'll press it and it will switch on and latch. And when, um, well, I'm not quite sure how I can do it with the, the Wii controller yet. I, don't, I wasn't intended to do it with that, but you never know. When this is sitting there idle, just, just sitting there on its wheels, doing nothing, after x minutes rather than let the batteries go flat i can just turn the thing off at which point it'll probably just fall over anyway uh, talking of wheels see i'm not using his design for wheels either i've got these wheels that i've been storing since um i played around with a robot buggy a long time ago so i've got a couple of extra wheels um 
the stepper motors are the same ones he said, you know, the 32mm ones. So these fit on here. I had to modify the, the central spigot a little bit, but that fits on there nicely. So that'll go on, on the side there. Um, what else? Yeah, I've got all the bits and pieces. The voltage regulator that I'm using is a bit different to his, but that doesn't matter. The Pro Mini that he uses is a slightly different design as well. Yeah, the biggest design that changed though as you can see here this is his well effectively his his wiring diagram and if we have a look at his web page just to look at how he puts this together you'll see why i've decided to change a couple of things so this is the layout of um, dupes uh, circuit board looks all reasonably straightforward and nice and neat um, unfortunately when you look at the um, how he wired this up from behind all, all these items on here incidentally that you see they're all um, soldered straight through onto this perf board and behind he does that and I think oh, no I'm sorry <laughs> I just can't go there that is that is not the way I want to work so um, I'll show you what I've, I've transformed it into so I've created a PCB then that emulates to a large extent his wiring diagram um, these items are pretty much in the same place as what he had them I've added a few things like the on off this is our reverse polarity protection MOSFET. Uh, this is the auto on off circuit that um, I also showed in a video. So basically, when we push this button here, it causes um, this dual MOSFET to turn on and supply the power. But what um, the Arduino can then do is, uh, well, first of all, the first thing it's got to do is latch the output so pin six in this case just a random unused pin i've picked will keep this turned on but what it means is that after you know a few minutes of inactivity however long that is um it says right i'm not keeping you latched anymore and disconnect the power from there which is that one there and therefore this will switch off and kill the power so the whole thing will just fall over i suspect I might have to give a warning and beep before I do that. Anyway, uh, so that's that's a couple of extra bits. So here we are. So as you can see, the um, the individual modules are just plug in. I'm going to be using header sockets on all here. I'm not going to be soldering anything on there. So header sockets on all these um, pin connections and just push fit all the modules in. Uh, there's our little MOSFET protection. And on the, the back, in order for the motors to plug in, I'm going to use header uh, pins, actually, not sockets. It shows them as sockets here, but that's because I chose the component wrongly. And I've got some spare GPIO pins here, uh, which just ha also happen to correspond to the I ICSP pin. So I could program it using this way if I wanted to. But anyway, I'm hoping more that I'll be using these for lights and bleepers and stuff like that. Now, before we look at uh, the project that I'm following and where it's from and everything else, I wonder if we could just have 10 seconds silence for these little components here that gave their all in the making of this project. Yes, unfortunately, these all gave up their magic smoke, uh, mainly because, um, well, on the power, which is at the top of this board here, when it got disconnected by my little um, clips and dragged itself down here, touching everything in its path, well, as you can imagine, the 12 volts or whatever went through just about everything. And um, these four components, that's the Pro Micro, the two stepper motors, and even my dual MOSFET power supply, all gave their all in the pursuit of this project. So if we can just have a few seconds silence. Okay, that's long enough. Right, uh, now let's have a look then where this project came from. Now I've been fascinated by self-balancing robots for a, a little while now. Uh, because I didn't really understand it, and I've heard of PID, P-I-D, Proportional Integral Derivative, which frankly are just terms to confuse this, you know, and make it sound bigger than what it is. Um, yeah, there's theory behind it and maths and everything else, but, you know, they could have chosen a better term in my view. But um, I didn't realise that, as you saw the car at the very beginning of this, I didn't realise the robots that actually stood up like that, yeah, on their own. Um, doing that broomstick thing about you know figuring out that figuring out that this is going to fall over and doing something about it. So when I found this out a few weeks ago, I thought you know that would be interesting. So I scoured the internet for all sorts of ideas about you know what you could do. And Duke Brocking, who we touched base a long long time ago, about three years ago, he put a comment in one of my videos. Um, I thought yeah that's good. His his project 
is pretty complete. Let's have a look at that. So this is Duke Brocking's uh, web page. Now he's got three videos as well that you can watch. There's one of them at the top and uh, lower down there's um, some others. And it's all very detailed, this project, very detailed indeed. So I thought, hmm, oh, I think I might go with this. Uh, unfortunately for me, Dupe's got far better machinery to make this sort of stuff than I have. Um, if I switch over to another one of his pages. Now here he gives all the pictures of all the hardware and stuff, right? And very nice it is too. But when he makes uh, some of this this wood frame, for example, let me just bring that one up. So here we have the um, the frame that he used. I mean, it's a fairly simple frame, you know, plywood down the sides, a bit thicker plywood in the middle. Um, but where where he puts these mount um, stepper motors on the back um, here, um, this is all done by some sort of CNC machine, so it's already accurate, and I found that quite difficult to do not having a CNC machine. In the interim, I've discovered that there are brackets of these sort of motors, which would make life an awful lot easier. But that notwithstanding, um, all these pages here with all these pictures on and videos and whatnot give you a pretty good idea of what to expect. So this is Dupe's original code, um, no changes no functional changes anyway really. What I have started to do is put all the comments above the line so that uh, I can read it probably. Dupe's got a habit of putting all his comments right over here on the right hand side um, which means you can't read them unless you scroll right. Even on my screen, you know, full, full screen mode I can't read them so I've put them all at the top. I'm also using software serial, that's another change that um, I'm making. For some reason, I don't know why, but Dupe's using the standard TXRX pins, you know, 0 and 1, for the actual communication with the joystick um, wireless transmission. So he's going straight into that um, RX pin on the Pro Micro, which means immediately you interfere with the standard serial output for debugging. So I've put in software serial on pin 8 for the joystick, that works absolutely fine. Uh, so I can then use the standard RXTX with an FTDI plugged in on the front. Um, and that means I can find out exactly what this is doing. Because one of the things that's really difficult about his code is you never quite know what this is supposed to be doing. Yeah, I mean, when you stand it up and then it just falls flat on its face or goes running off, you think, well, what is it you think you're doing that's causing this so I can correct it? Um, the other thing is that uh, in Dupe's code, he's got the PID values initially hard-coded. Um, if I go up the top, it's it's these ones here, look. So you've got the P, I and D for the um, proportional, integral and derivative. Um, start. He's got 15, 1.5 and 30. They didn't work for me. So I thought, well, okay, let's start from zero and work up. But then having to change these and upload the code every time, that was just a non-starter. So what I've done is um, put three variable resistors on a little board here. There we are. So that's, as you can see, P, I and D there, reading into the analog ports on the Pro Micro. And I can adjust these then in real time. So I don't have to upload any code. And the, the actual code I use for that, I think I've got it in here somewhere. Here we are. So I just read some tuning values every time. And that, well, the code works, it doesn't help the robot balance at the moment. And the reason for that, I think, is because the way Dupe's got it going for his robot, he's got, for a start, five centimetre wheels. Now, my wheels are not five centimetres. The yellow bits are just about five. I don't want to run it without tyres. So because it's bigger, I think all the maths is wrong. If you consider when this is standing up, right, if it moves one step on the stepper motor, how far is it going to travel? Well, obviously, it's going to travel further with bigger wheels than with Dupe's model with five centimetre wheels. So I, I'm guessing the code is thinking I've travelled X millimetres. Well, in fact, it's X plus Y millimetres in my case. Right, just hold your horses. Late breaking news. I've just received um, a couple of other components that I've ordered from a UK firm. This is um, Technobots. Um, because they had some five centimeter wheels. Yeah, I've got one out. So that's a five centimeter wheel, and it's made of this sort of, well, sort of semi hard plastic, which means I'll be able to adapt that hole to fit this. And you can see the difference if I take this one off. Now, if we compare the two, I mean, there's obviously quite a difference. So, what I mean about it being the yellow size. So, anyway, that's a five centimeter wheel, and they cost 
from Technobots. They cost, let's have a look. Um, wheel, pack of four. You get a pack of four for 189. That was the cheap pack, obviously, just for well, experimentation purposes. Um, and also the angle brackets they do. Unfortunately, they only had one, so they've got one to follow. But that's the angle bracket. And had I known this, of course, before I started this, I would have used this because this stepper motor fits into this exactly. You can screw it up and then screw this bit, of course, onto the wood underneath. I mean, that would have been, you know, a hundred times easier than me trying to line up these holes without a template and getting it all to fit. I know I got it to fit eventually, but it was it would have just been a lot, lot easier doing it like this. As I say, if you've got a CNC router though or something, then I guess you can do what Dupe did. But anyway, so that means I've got five centimeter wheel now that I can try to see if that makes any difference to the, the balancing. Um, and when this extra bracket comes, I might experiment just to see how easy it is to um, fit on there. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, but that wasn't too bad. And that was, um, as I say, Technobots. So where are they? They're actually in rugby, would you believe, in the UK. But they probably ship worldwide, I'd imagine. Who doesn't these days? Yeah. So, yeah, just thought I'd bring that to your attention in the middle of this otherwise fascinating video, I'm sure. OK, what I'm going to do is turn Dupe's code here into something that I can actually understand. You know, I've got to get my head around all these PID values. So I've started to create um, a version 2 up here and extract some things that you know don't need to be in the main code out because all his code is in one big monolithic thing which is okay if you know that it works but i don't well it's not working for me at all so i'm going to start extracting all this and what i'm going to do is create a version of this code that first of all just balances the robot so you can push it a little bit and it just just stays there like dupes does have you seen that yet no let me just show you what dupes one does so as you can see here, as soon as Dupe moves that robot, it just moves forward, catches that broomstick effectively, the battery pack at the top, and, and stays upright. Really, really stable. Yep, that's what I'm aiming for anyway. So you see that Dupe's robot stands there, can, you know, move a little bit. Well, it doesn't really oscillate like that because he's got the values correct. The wheels turn just that little tiny bit, don't they, keeping that broomstick upright. Um, which is great, but I'm going to just do the core bit first, i.e. standing up. Never mind about remote control and moving and turning. I've got to get the PID values correct. Once they're right, so that robot is stable, upright, every single time, then I can worry about, OK, now if I turn left, are you going to fall over? Because yeah, once that, that robot starts leaning from the vertical in any direction, so it was vertical and that leans a little bit, it's going to run away, isn't it? This It's going to try and keep up with it and bring it back to the vertical. So, yeah, there's there's a fair bit of work to do on this. As I know from my Home Alone project, which is many thousands of lines of code, frankly, it takes time to do that. You've got to, you know, prototype it, just get it working. It doesn't really matter how you do it. Plug in magic numbers if you have to. But then you've got to refactor all that, make it something, well, nice and beautiful and that you understand how it's all working i do not understand dupe's code because my maths and physics is not good enough to understand his code he's got um, excel spreadsheets that show exactly how his modeling works and i think i do not understand that i'm going to have to sit down and go through that with a fine tooth comb to understand how it works the other thing that dupe does and i'm thinking is this really necessary is this the thing of self-balancing robots or is it just dupe doing it on his loop um, it's got to take exactly four milliseconds and i'm thinking why why four milliseconds well he explains why i think somewhere in here but um i'm thinking I'd, I'd rather not do that in the loop i just want it as a state machine so it whizzes around the loop as many times as it need to and goes what am i doing am i trying to correct an offset in the balance or what is it I'm, I'm actually doing at the moment? Am I moving forward, turning? You know, just keep the whole thing working as a state machine. The actual parts that fit onto the um, printed circuit board, I've kept exactly to what Dupe says. I've even ordered them in the same place that he said. So I'm hoping there's some sort of affiliate link that he used. Now, this one up here, that on the board it says HC12 because the footprint that I found under Easy EDA for this um, said HC12, but Dupe doesn't mention that, and neither does DX.com. 
Uh, let's have a look where I got all this stuff and you can decide whether to get it from there or somewhere else. So this is the homepage for DX.com, which stands for Deal Extreme. I've never used them before, I have to be honest. Um, but I did for this particular project because I just wanted to make sure I got exactly the same components. So my order for the bits I bought here, that's the 2.4 gig wireless transceiver. Remember, there's two of those, one in the joystick, one here. The OK, this is an MPU 6050. You can get those anywhere. The stepper drivers, these are the DRV 8825s. There are others around. And that one is, let me just check my notes here. That's similar to another one, an A number. No, I've got it. Oh, there it is on screen. Look, that's similar to that one. It's supposed to be pin compatible, but I want to double check that. And of course, yes. Now look, the stepper motors. These are um, NEMA uh, NEMA 14 stepper motors, not the larger ones. These are 35 mil, not 42. But Dupe does say you can use 42 mil if you want. You'd have to change the frame size a bit then to accommodate that. But they're not cheap actually. And the whole lot of this look came to. 49.15 with 13.69 shipping so yes it's not a cheap project at all so i'm definitely going to get it working one way or another by hook or by crook it will be made to work so yeah you can obviously buy this stuff elsewhere but um on dupes website he's got links to all the stuff let me see if i can find his actual links here we are all these here look yeah um some of them don't work anymore so the the battery i'm just using three 18650s works just as well dupes website is the place to go for all things uh, about this particular project right then i'll leave you with a, a final goodbye for this robot until the coding has been sorted out so we'll start it up by pressing the button there it goes self-latching and once it's latched we stand it up try, try not to run over all our wires Right, it's standing up at the moment, so I think we'll just leave it there before it falls down. And uh, I'll see you in the very next video, perhaps with an update on this, perhaps on something entirely different. I suspect it's going to take me some time to get the code in here to my liking. So, hmm, patience is a virtue. See you in the next video. Whoa! I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.